The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate the Feast of St. Lawrence. He was a deacon in the early church around the year 250 when the church was suffering all kinds of persecution. He was known for his extraordinary charity, especially toward the poor and the hungry, so much so that the Roman officials imagined that the church had this vast treasure. And so they came to St. Lawrence and threatened him, demanding that he hand over this treasure. He said, well, the church is a great treasure. I need a few days to gather it all together. And they gave him three days. During that time, he sold the sacred vessels, everything he could lay his hands on, distributed property to the poor, and all the proceeds of the sale. And then he gathered the poorest of the poor and the lame, lined them up in front of the Roman officials and said, here is the treasure of the church. Needless to say, the Roman officials were infuriated and they condemned St. Lawrence to death. He is the subject of countless works of art in the early church and throughout the generations. He has more churches in Rome, of which he's a patron, than any other saint except the Blessed Virgin Mary. He's a very popular saint in history. We go to the readings because these readings were specifically chosen for the feast. That's how important this particular saint is in the calendar. The first reading comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, the famous chapter where Paul gives that statement, which really was the spiritual principle by which St. Lawrence lived. The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Well, that describes St. Lawrence. He sowed generously, and now he is reaping generously in heaven with all the angels and saints gazing on the vision of God. He's an outstanding example to us that we are to go to that extra effort to be generous, to give what we can, whether it's material or spiritual works of mercy, our particular ways in which we are gifted, our charisms for the sake of the poor. That brings us to today's gospel from John chapter 12, which states, this is Jesus speaking, very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. And that's basically the great paradox of Christianity. It's through death that new life comes. That's why baptism is a primordial sacrament. We die with Christ. We're buried with Christ. So that just as Christ was risen from the dead, we also are raised. But it's that dying, dying to ourselves, dying to our sin, our sinful inclinations, dying to our selfishness, so that we can be open to God. So we die to our own personal agendas and ambitions. We put ourselves in the service of God and especially the poor. It's by giving that we receive, and that's true discipleship. This is what St. Lawrence teaches us. And again, St. Paul in that first reading says when we do that, when we give, God is never outdone in generosity. He always replenishes and gives more so that we can, in fact, increase our giving right through life. It's sort of an escalating exchange. We give the little bit, like the boy who gave the five loaves, and Jesus multiplied it to feed 5,000. When we give just the little we have and trust the Lord, he will give to us in abundance. And we will then have a life of exceeding generosity and be like St. Lawrence. 
It is through the seeds, the blood of the martyrs, that the church really grew. And St. Lawrence is the prime example, an early martyr, an example for all martyrs, an example for us today. So on his feast day, let us ask that he pray for us, that we may, in fact, exercise grace that's given to us and be open and generous to those in need.